Hi everyone and welcome back to Gamertech, where this week I have for you an unboxing and review for the new iPhone 8. We're looking today at the new Space Grey finish, which is somewhat different from previous Apple iPhones also dubbed Space Grey, especially with that all new glass design, which hasn't been seen before in previous models. Also new for this year is the introduction of wireless charging, a feature made possible by the introduction of the glass back, and it's also been confirmed that this will work with third-party wireless charging docks, and I'll have a video up for that exploring this feature in the near future. We'll be taking a look at what else is new this year, including some of the more significant upgrades which have been introduced to the screen and processor, which Apple are claiming, as they often do, to be the most powerful and smartest chip ever in an iPhone. But before all of that, let's unbox Apple's newest addition to their iPhone family, the iPhone 8. So for the unboxing, I'm going to be using these wonderfully stylish gloves, just to try and eliminate potential finger marks during the video. As always, we have the Apple and iPhone logos flanking the sides of the box, and then a little bit of information about the specifications of the phone on the bottom here, including the fact that this is the 64GB model. This is actually the new standard storage size configuration for iPhone, which makes sense when you consider how good the cameras have become and the file sizes of high quality photos and 4K videos. It's also been made a little bit easier to remove that plastic wrapping on the box. All we have to do is just pull this tab and now we can get a better look at the matte finish on the box here. Another thing you'll notice is that Apple have colour matched the boxes to this year's phones. The iPhone boxes have always had a nice and clean look, but I think the colour matching just takes this a little bit further and gives your phone choice a more personalised touch. And I think when you're spending this much money on a phone, then the least we deserve is to have it packaged in a box with a premium finish to it, which is certainly what we have here. So now we can go ahead and use the weight of the phone to allow the lid to slide off the box, and we're first met with this envelope, and that's going to contain all the relevant paper information. And removing this of course will reveal the iPhone itself, which we'll just set aside for now to take a look at the included accessories. So first off we have a much more colourful quick start guide, and if you're new to iPhone then I definitely recommend checking this out. We also have the SIM ejection tool, a set of Apple stickers, which personally I won't be using as I never do, but I know that some people really like those. And finally we have the safety and warranty information. And to get to those remaining accessories, we just have to pull this handy tab to remove the iPhone. At the top we have the earpods with the lightning connector. Of course iPhone no longer has a 3.5mm headphone port, and actually, these are a pretty decent sounding pair of earphones, so if you're looking for a pair that will work well with the phone, then I definitely recommend these. However, I do think it's a shame that Apple didn't include AirPods with this year's phones. It was long rumoured before the phone's release, and given how much iPhones cost these days, I think it would have been a nice addition. And one thing to watch out for is that on the reverse side of the AirPods is a lightning to 3.5mm headphone jack adapter. So if you already own a regular pair of wide earphones, then you will be able to use these with this phone. iPhone 7 certainly caused a bit of a stir when the removal of the headphone jack was announced, but with the many options for Bluetooth earphones, and of course the included headphone jack adapter, this will hopefully not be an issue for many. At the bottom we have the USB Type-A to Lightning charging cable, and again I really thought that Apple would have introduced a USB Type-C connector here, particularly after their decision to switch to USB-C ports on devices such as the MacBook, and also with Apple heavily advertising the new Fast Charge feature on the newest generation of iPhones. Fast Charge is not compatible with the included cable, and users will have to purchase a USB-C to Lightning cable and combine this with at least a 29W power adapter in order to make use of this feature. So the included wall charger will also not be sufficient to offer fast charging. If you're interested to see whether or not the fast charging feature is really worth it, then keep your eye out in the next few weeks for a video on this channel where I'll be comparing standard charging against fast charge and also the wireless charging capabilities. Now bringing the phone back into focus here and we'll first take a look at the hardware features, which will seem mostly familiar. The front of the phone maintains the same form factor, with a 4.7 inch glass display surrounded by a colour matching anodized aluminium band. As with previous models, we have the power button and SIM card slot on the right side, 
and on the left side we have the silent mode switch and volume control. And at the bottom here we have the matching speaker and microphone grills, with the lightning connector in the centre. So let's now remove the plastic film to get our first proper look at the new glass rear panel. And with the plastic cover removed you can now see a lot more clearly the space grey colouring, which does look absolutely gorgeous. It blends really nicely with the black aluminium and the front glass too. Of the three colour choices this year I definitely like the colour scheme of the space grey finish the best. It's the most seamless blend, and I personally find the black screen area against the white bezels to be quite striking and distracting, whereas you can see here how great the blend of the black screen and bezels looks. Now Apple has also used the term space grey for a number of different colours over the years, and I think it's probably most accurate for describing iPhone 8's glass panel. I'll be going into a bit more detail about this in a separate video, where I'll be comparing phones from the black model iPhones from three different generations. One thing you should bear in mind is that with a glass back, iPhone 8 is more susceptible to damage. Drop tests over the phone's release period have confirmed that the rear glass will shatter just like the front display. However, it does take an excessive amount of force to do so. If you use a protective case on your phone, or are simply just as careful as one would be using any smartphone, then this shouldn't be an issue for you. But overall, I am definitely a fan of the new glass back. It feels strong and sturdy and really great in your hand. Despite changing to a glass rear panel, Apple has maintained splash water and dust resistance with an IP67 rating for the phone. I should mention that this phone is marginally heavier than the iPhone 7 at 148 grams, which is a 10 gram increase. And this is largely due to switching out that aluminium rear panel for glass. I certainly don't think this is a bad thing though, because I feel as though smartphones really have peaked in terms of trying to become more and more impressively small and light iPhone 8 has a well-balanced weight to it, so you know when it's in your hand, but you're also not going to tie your arm out when making a phone call. It's also 0.1mm larger in height, 0.2mm larger in width, and 0.2mm larger in depth than iPhone 7. However, iPhone 7 phone cases will still be compatible with the iPhone 8. So taking a look at some of the new features this year, the Retina HD display has been upgraded to include support for True Tone. Now of course it's not actually possible to show you this on a recording, but you can perhaps get a sense of the effect as I toggle on and off the feature here. This technology adjusts the white balance according to the colour temperature of the surrounding light, to optimise viewing in any environment. Additionally, the display also features improved colour accuracy, so your content looks just that little bit more crisp and vibrant. The contrast ratio and brightness however remain unchanged. Some iPhone owners may be disappointed to see that Apple is sticking with an LCD display, rather than upgrading to OLED technology. Apple instead has reserved this for the iPhone X, or iPhone X, and justify this with the boosted price tag, if of course you can consider a phone costing £1000 to be any kind of justification at all. Support has been added for HDR, or High Dynamic Range, including the main industry standards Dolby Vision and HDR10 which have recently been included in online streaming services such as Netflix, Amazon Video and iTunes. So those who wish to record or watch film on their iPhones will see much better images. Once again we're seeing upgrades to performance, with the introduction of the A11 Bionic chip. This delivers 25% faster maximum speed performance, 70% faster idle processing and 70% faster multitasking capability all in comparison to the iPhone 7. The GPU has also seen an increase of 30% in speed. These boosts to iPhone 8's performance will certainly be useful for the new augmented reality, as developers look to expand on this technology for the future. The battery will allow 14 hours talk time, 12 hours of internet use, 13 hours wireless video playback and 40 hours wireless audio playback which is unchanged from the iPhone 7. However, this is somewhat of an achievement, given that the phone will be operating at much faster speeds. The iPhone 8's volume has also seen improvements, with the stereo speakers offering a 25% boost in volume compared to the iPhone 7, and from my testing, this phone can certainly reach impressive volume levels. There's been slightly less to write home about concerning the cameras. The 12 megapixel rear camera, and the 7 megapixel front facing camera remain exactly the same as from the iPhone 7. Improvements will however be made from Apple's A11 Bionic chip, 
with Apple promising better pixel processing and faster autofocus in low-light conditions. Aside from these new additions, iPhone 8 retains the second-generation Touch ID fingerprint scanner in the Home button. Now this was actually the deciding factor for me in selecting my new iPhone, since I'm a regular user of Apple Pay and of course Touch ID no longer exists with the iPhone X. So for the time being I'd like to continue using this feature and I'm really glad that this has been retained for the iPhone 8. And the final major new features are of course fast charge and wireless charge. Apple claims fast charging can give a battery level of 50% in just 30 minutes. But as I said this will be explored in a future video. So that's just about going to do it for this video. If you have any questions or want to know anything more about the iPhone 8 then please leave a comment below. If you found this helpful then please give the video a like. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss anything else from Gamertech.